liberty and justice for all. Thanks for coming, for calling the budget hearing portion of tonight's um, se session um, to order at 5.32. And next we'll have the roll call. We have a motion to accept the agenda for the budget hearing. I'll um, make a motion to accept the agenda. Do we have support? Yeah. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No abstentions? Motion carries. At this time, we have uh, an opportunity for public comment on the budget portion. Cindy had asked if maybe you could stand to the side. Sure. I don't know if you want to have your mask up so that she can yes, hear your comments and stuff. So yeah. I will that's, accommodate that's that. That's all yeah. I had. Yeah. And Cindy, you have my permission to instruct me if I'm not speaking loud enough or you mm -hmm. can't see my face. Okay, ready? Kristen, do you want to have the vice chair in the picture as well as you. If so, you need to move over more. This way. Okay. Got it? No, but but it'll work. <laughs> go, go, go like this? Yeah. So easy. Okay, so. Good evening, fellow Bay School Board and uh, Chair of the meeting. I am participating in the public comment section. My name is Kristen Lorty. I am the moderator of the Uber Cares Citizens Facebook group, and I'm participating as a taxpayer that cares about transparent and local, uh, transparent and accountable local government. So um, I do have a few comments on the budget. I do not feel like I had enough time to study this and provide meaningful public comment, but I am going to give you what I do have. So uh, first of all, in the budget hearing, the materials weren't made available until yesterday and there was a late paper notice that went out last week. I realized that there was a notice on the uh, Dollar Bay Facebook page, but I didn't see that. I did not receive a, an advanced email letting me know about it. So it just does not give the public an opportunity to have meaningful public input in my opinion. I do appreciate that Mrs. Norland put uh, the budgetary materials online yesterday, and yet it's not just not enough time for people to really look at this. Um, I don't anticipate there's going to be much input or that anything will change. I noticed on the, the budget itself, it says adopted June 28th, 2022, right at the top. It doesn't say proposed, so it just says it says adopted, so every expectation is, is that this is simply a, a cursory vote for something that has already been pre-decided and that any input here today is, is will be taken as input, but not in, not in a way that would change anything on the budget. Um, there is something that I would like to... Well, I want to notice on the budget itself that there's a couple categories that went down. Pupil support went down from $44,552 from last year to only $600 this year. Instructional staffing for the library, as one person in this audience had, uh, has pointed out before, is important to them from the public, went down from $36,018 down to $17,564. Many of the other line items under supporting services, that's where I had time to take a peek, uh, those all went up, including the district and executive administration, which went up from 169,778 in 2021 up to 251,004 in 2022, which is a 48% increase, an increase of $81,226.
So sizable increase there. Fiscal services went up $10,000, operations and maintenance $20,000, people transportation $12,000, central support $16,000, athletics $30,000. So several items in that category did go up. My petition in particular around the executive administration is that there was an item that was decided just this month at a meeting that I was not made aware of, and I have made, a, made the board aware of my not being aware of that, but I, am, I have personally petitioned the board to be aware of all the meetings that happened here for Dollar Bay, Tamarack City. And I think the public should be given that opportunity to participate if, if they wish. I doubt that it was highly attended by the public. It was posted online just the day before, and where Mrs. Norland uh, negotiated her new contract. She did an excellent job of negotiating because she's gotten quite a sizable increase in her salary. And she did provide the board, she provided this to me yesterday, thank you Mrs. Norland, for this spreadsheet on here, which is quite hard to understand. Um, I'm sure it was better if you could hear it live, but it does not tell us all these salaries and all this information, what schools this goes to, but it does say Upper Peninsula Schools. So it's a basis for her justification of her 6% increase and her 3% merit bonus of the few key items that um, she successfully negotiated. She did not happen to mention the Houghton County salaries, of which she was already the fourth highest paid in Houghton County. Uh, she's paid higher than, already, prior to this increase, paid higher than Calumet, Stanton, Hancock, Lake Linden, Chassel. And of those, Lake Linden and Hancock and Calumet all have higher pupil count. And Lake Linden and Chassel are dual role. But Mrs. Norland successfully um, made, uh, made a change last year to be able to lobby the board for full-time principal. And so her duties were diminished, well done, while her salaries received a significant increase. And all without meaningful public participation. Amazing job there that the taxpayers of Michigan and of, the, of this um, Dollar Bay Tamarack City School District will be paying for. But I at least want to have one member of the public that's here that says, I sure wish I had at least known about the meeting and could have requested the materials in advance and might have been able to at least provide my comment prior to her contract being approved at the school board meeting of which we received notice just a few minutes before the meeting. So um, I am a disturbed Dollar Bay taxpayer. I don't think that was fair to us. I think that we deserve at least accountable and transparent government. I do appreciate your hearing my comment. Those were my comments on the budget and on that line item. I realize that there's always a little bit more to the story, but I feel like I was not given adequate opportunity to participate in the, de in the decisions I had to make. That's the limited feedback I have tonight. Thank you for hearing my comment. Thank you, Christy. Do you have anyone else that would like to give a public comment? All right, with that, we'll move on to new business uh, discussion of the proposed 2022-2023 budget. <coughs> to it. Um, so Christina and I work diligently on uh, next year's budget and we have proposed 300, um, 325, excuse me, 320 students at a rate of 9,000 uh, responsibility to rate of 9,000 to the foundation amount. Uh, it's a conservative number, one of the lowest ones that's been presented so far. Of course, nothing has been adopted by the, the state yet, but we can expect state aid fund has plenty of cash reserves and at a minimum we, we should expect to see a $300 increase per student. Um, so with that, that carries through between our local and state sources. Um, we had a slight increase in the tax base which increased our taxable revenue in local sources um, and then that plays through to our state sources. So we did, however, we're losing some of our federal funding, but then we're gaining a large portion back with AARP after three. Um, and the amount of, uh, so we, we lost our after three fund, or after two funding of 136,000 this year. Next year, however, we'll see uh, 305,000 from the AARP after three. And then that will flow through. Um, Christina and I work diligently on that with NPD. There's a lot of areas that will help impact student education. That kind of flows through into our expenditures, um, you know, with adding needs that we have for the district. So some of that money will help cover salaries and then other
other portions for good back burden loss among other areas. Um, so we filled you in on that. It's probably a monthly edition of the application. Uh, so that kind of covers our revenue uh, for next year projected. Uh, if we move down to expenditures, we have planned for an additional teacher uh, in the high school that was, um, of course, we were short on that this year. And Christina had that posted throughout the year. We hope to find somebody this summer, and we have budgeted that for that next year. Um, for added needs, uh, kind of our pair of pros at risk. Um, we keep a, a staffing the same, and then we do have room for um, hopefully one additional pair of pros if, if we can find a qualified candidate. And that will be funded through our the new additional federal money. Um, That's actually a little bit confused. We did fund continue with the additional pair of pros. And we had used some different funds, um, yeah, split with the other states. funds, and, and this year we're just going to be using the general fund. Thank you, Christine. Yep. Um, come down to people support. Uh, there, there was a change there. When Jesse was here, we had um, Jesse was our counselor. He was funded through that category of the budget. Of course, now we've seen that he is our principal. Um, he's funded under administration, so you'll see a decrease there. Instructional staff. Um, Part of our library, as we had noted here, this is for the continuing functions of the library, um, library staffing, and some of that funding, as we had discussed over the past several years, or excuse me, for, for the staffing for that position, some of the hours have been adjusted to better match the needs of the district. There's no, no difference in the library staffing Not between this last year. year and this year. This year is the same. Exactly the same. I just kind of wanted to mention on, Check in. on your point there, Kristen. For district and executive admin, however, uh, it, I know you had noted, Kristen, that there was an increase, and that was due to the way we had allocated Christina's salary. Uh, when she was combined principal su or principal superintendent, her salary was split over two function codes. Um, this year and then going forward into next year, it, it all falls under executive administration. So we have some cost increases uh, with staff and salaries according to the new support staff contract, and, and that flows through all the support and services. Um, Christina's increase is listed here, and then also uh, we have a small increase of $250 in for the auto increase with hunger first. So not, not a large increase there. Um, and then we have increased a, a portion due to inflation for all of her supplies that we might buy. So uh, I, I went across the board between five to 10 percent to help uh, kind of cover some of those needs that we'll experience next year. Um, school administration, we, we don't have any staffing changes there. Hope we, you know, hopefully continue to have Jesse and Rachel stay on board and their salaries are reflected in there along with all the other needs of the upstairs office. Um, coming down to fiscal services, so that uh, includes an increase ISD contract that is paid uh, for the, the gentleman or individual that might hold my position next year. And you guys are all aware, I went before him back and happy to be here. This is my last time that I'll, I'll sit down at the similar table. So uh, we have an increase listed there. In addition, um, I have allocated 12,000, which we have averaged roughly 10,000 for taxes that are dated and written off. Um, and those are funds basically that we received from the, the townships whose properties uh, weren't under a principal resident exemption or veterans exemption, and then we have to basically issue the township money back. However, that money then comes back through state aid in following years, so it's kind of a, a, a circle. It ends up back in our pockets, but it, the expense falls under that category. Operations and maintenance, uh, same staffing requirements. I've increased our um, our lighting and electric bill slightly, not too much. Uh, I think I have a 4% increase there and a 8% increase in our fuel costs. So I, I, we expect that to remain relatively stable. Um, however, time will tell. We'll, we'll have to watch the budget closely next year as we see how inflation plays out. 
people transportation we have increased the fuel cost fifty percent so this year we ended just over twenty thousand and in fuel that we paid on behalf of neighbor busing um, but I, I expect that fuel cost will be significantly more than we'll see for our heating and electric increases across the board so I have a, I have a fifty percent increase um, plus the thing is that it's Essential support, MC services, no real changes there. Uh, we'll continue business as usual. There were some changes, and Christina, I don't know if you received that contract, and I know the yeah. REMC staff was working on getting that updated price. But, um, for this budget proposed going forward, we're looking at the same price that we paid for 21 22. Hopefully, we'll, I don't know, Stanton's on. Athletics, um, there were some increases based on the new negotiated Schedule D that was just decided at the last meeting a week and a half ago. So I had those built in, built into the athletics expenditure function. Moving down, we don't have anything listed under. Function code 400, expenditure code 400. Uh, we still expect to see, and then going down to 500, 600, we still expect to see money come in uh, from the ISD that we've been receiving the last several years, varies between 10 and 11,000. And then we have a small fund modification of 173 for state requirement at risk funds that need to be transferred to the three phase program. So, overall picture looks Looks like we have a we have a healthy budget next year. Uh, we expect to have a uh, forty three thousand nine hundred seventeen net income, which we will add to our fund balance projected at the end of this year five hundred forty two thousand five hundred twenty one to end next year at five eighty six four thirty eight. Okay. Any no need to borrow this year. No need to borrow. That's not a good thing. Yeah. Thanks to all the hard work of staff and, and the board, you know, you've done a great job. So thank you, everybody. Thank you, Tyler. And we'll come to. Well, I'll bring you. If any anybody have any questions on the general fund, if not, I'll, I'll walk you through the three phase budget now. So next year. Service, we will not be included, well, at this point, included, uh, we won't have free lunches. We'll have to start charging students again. Uh, this will be our first year, if, if things go as planned, first year charging students when we are operating a three phase program in house. So the budget is up in the air at this point. Um, we look back several years at what we had received when we were purchasing food from Houghton and what our student participation was like. We hope that it will be, of course, more. Uh, a lot of that's unknown at this point. And so I, I put in a modest um, 13,000 for student revenue for paid lunches, and then 1,500 for staff lunches. State sources, um, we get a small portion that comes through state aid. I expect that to remain about the same. So we have 6,000 budgeted there. Federal sources for our free and reduced pricing. Um, I've reduced that uh, $40,000 to make uh, $163,677 for our breakfast and lunch. So we'll see where it ends up. It'll, um, I think we'll need to keep a close eye, especially on our expenditures. Ending the year this year, we do, we're do. we going to carry over quite a large fund balance, which we'll probably need to create a spend down plan with MDE. Um, and I, I think that Christina and I, or Christina and whoever my replacement is, will be able to come up with a plan to at least um, walk them through how we plan to spend down the fund balance in accordance with their regulation, you know, with all their policies. Out there. So at this time, Continue to keep the staffing the same. You know, we had an awesome team that carried us through the year, and as long as they all come back, you know, we expect to see the same results next year. 
So the local source is then that 14.5, that's basically if you show people you pay for lunches. Correct. And what yeah. would you base that on the number of lunches per day per year, whatever that is? Um, I don't have that number right in front of me, but yes. Look at not that many. Years look at previous years, trends, and then um, we had Jen, our, our new food service director, she was out this past two weeks, so what we did is I looked at past history and I increased it slightly. Um, I think we had, on average, received anywhere from between 10 to 14,000 in student meals. I went with 13,000, kind of a little bit on the higher end, but we'll see where things end up. We, we do have uh, high quality food now, so we'll just try to do better. Does anybody have an idea like what someone would be paying next week for that? Based on that um, we don't have the price yet. It's uh, we will need to increase the cost of the lunches, um, but it's based on a complicated equation. Um, and so we have to work with the MDEA on that. They want all schools in Michigan to get to a certain point, you know, by a certain year down the road. And so every year you are supposed to increment it and increase it based on where your starting point is or was. So we are going to be doing that until we have. for breakfast, four fifty six for lunch. So I don't think we really charge that much. We might see yeah, right now. Participation. We're last like time we charged it was more like three. Um, for lunch for kids, so it's a little bit more than that. But it's, I mean, there's just so many unknowns because we haven't had to charge for lunches in two years. It was really wonderful timing with that Brian kick and that homemade <laughs> food to have all those lunches just available to everybody. So that's great. We hope that um, the experience of the good lunch is going to be good enough advertisement to get people to keep on taking them. And um, anybody who's getting a free lunch, you still get reimbursed that. That same strong rate, so that's always helpful when we can get a balance to fill out the free reduced lunch for us so that we can get that money coming back to us. Yeah, it's just a little bit unknown, of course, at this mm -hmm. point, what that participation will be, you know, based on last two years, every year, this year, pretty much. So. Yeah, maybe that should be continued. Thanks for questions. Any other ones for food service? Special activities, all of our, our class accounts, student activity accounts. Um, we just have an amount, total revenue 25.5, total expenditures, and basically we plan everything we plan to bring in, we plan to expend. So at this point, kind of up in the air on what those class accounts do. So state is required at the last two years that we, uh, or excuse me, Gadsden is as required that we make a budget for that, so it's, of course, always dependent on what the, what the class is and grades and stuff, but that is our, our service account. Any other questions? So next year for our winter levy, um, we still plan to uh, basically levy the 18 mills on all non-principal residents uh, homesteads. So all of our investment property and businesses in the, in the area that, that falls under our taxing jurisdiction. Um, we did see a slight heavy reduction this year uh, of 0.966 in, in box six there. You can see that. Um, which brought down our, our total millage that we'll be able to levy to, this will impact us next year to 18.5809. Um, Christina and I, we'll talk later in the next one, but 
This year we are fine. Uh, we're able to levy the full 18 mils, which will allow, um, allow us to receive the 9,000 per pupil. Uh, as we roll down into our, our debt fund for our uh, refunding bond that was redone in 2014, we're going to levy 1.95 and the 2019 bond, 4%, for a total millage of 5.9,000. And then all commercial personal property, 6%, and then all other, all other property would be reduced to 18 mils. So uh, as a reminder, folks that have principal residence, you don't have to pay the 18 mils. Um, however, the debt fund, or the debt millage does apply. motion to adjourn the budget hearing session to place session. Motion to adjourn. Yeah. Do I support it? Support. Okay, I support. All those in favor? Aye. 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 We're adjourning the closing hearing. Closing the budget hearing. hearing. Okay. to the special meeting part of tonight's session. also have a public comment portion for the special meeting. Do we have any public comment during this time? Hi. Kristen Marquis, that will be a taxpayer. And I made several comments at the last hearing, but on this one, I guess I have a question on the Operating millage, uh, where Tyler had mentioned that that uh, is potentially going down. So that seems like that would, if that goes through, that would make it less for the taxpayer of the bring it down from the 6.7 to the 5 point. And that's for next year, if I have, if I understood that right, for next summer, that would affect us. That would affect taxpayers by taxes being slightly smaller next year. Can you let me know if that's correct? In the agenda, um, item three under. Uh, Roman numeral four, we will be discussing operating millage a little bit more at that point and sharing that kind of information. Okay, so then um, I have that question. Uh, I had another one on the on that 18%. That just seems like it's a standard throughout Michigan that it automatically gets um, adopted and approved everywhere. It does place a burden on the non-homesteaded properties, of which I am one of those non-homesteaded property owners, and it you know, it really balances the scale so that the non-homesteaded properties are paying significantly more based on those 18 mils. That doesn't necessarily get solved at the school board level, but I just like to say it out loud that it seems to go through automatically. And that this is, um, this meeting and these items are, an, are uh, interesting enough to the taxpayer that it would be welcome if there was public comment offered at the end of the meeting. I know that Dollar Bay doesn't do it that way, but there are times when the public you know, would like to actually hear the discussion of the board 
and um, may want to weigh in at the end of the meeting. I appreciate that the township does it, um, but it is absent here. And so as I had mentioned before, I'd just like to say that on the, um, back to the salary comment that I made, I did not state this so that it's clear and on the record that Mrs. Norland's new salary is a minimum, it's jumping from a $102,000 to make two hundred sixty-five up to 108,500 minimum base salary plus 3% bonus evaluation as long as she gets a, a four, as long as she does well, which she always does because the public doesn't get to weigh in on those. And um, they happen also in secret, uh, in, in my opinion, but provided that she gets a good performance evaluation, she gets $3,255 for a total, just of the salary and the merit bonus, $111,755 which is likely to put her ahead of the Adams County. So she will be paid just under the Houghton County School District and the CCISD. So that's what the, and she has every opportunity to correct me after that, but I did take the data that I received from the Mackinac. I have a, I've presented that, I've sent it to board members, and it's just quite generous for this area, for a school of 355 or 320 students, that uh, we have so little public input, transparency into the matter of the reviews, and the salary, the contract negotiations, and they are very generous for Houghton County. So the board members are extremely generous to Mrs. Norland and the public has very, no, really, no opportunity unless you're looking at the, you're quite diligent um, to find out, much more diligent than I am to actually find out what's being decided in Dollar Bay before it happens. So I'd just like to close with those comments. Thank you. Thank you, Kristen. Anyone else? Public comment? Seeing no further people with comment, uh, we'll move on to the action and discussion items. Um, number one being the general fund, food service fund, and special activity fund recommendation to adopt the 2021-2022 final budget as presented. I'll make that motion. We have a motion. Is there support? Is the 2122 correct? Yeah. Could you go through, if necessary, or could you offer us just some highlights of yeah. what might be different from when this proposed budget was adopted? So, uh, what we had proposed, we had proposed um, at the old rate, so local sources, state sources increased, and then we had additional fund, uh, federal funding that was granted throughout the year to the CARES. Um, and then in our, our basic programs, going down to uh, our elementary, high school, and pre-K, we had adjustments there to actual based on when we had done that original budget, we knew we were going to start the preschool, you know, so we were kind of shooting dark at that point on where we were going to be. Um, but we brought that down to actual, we got a wonderful teacher in. Needs those come uh, that basically that number comes out to almost um, excuse me the added needs for at risk and title funding we brought that to match the actual uh, revenue that we received for the year so for those two cover covering all of the basically all of the instructional staff and then if we move down to support and services people support um, we had some small fees of six hundred. The library is 17,000, cover staffing and other needs to operate the public library. Um, district and executive admin, covering our board and um, superintendent salaries and office needs. School administration, updated actuals to request a almost full year principalship and then uh, actual budgeted amount for this, uh, principal secretary. Fiscal services, um, we had that large tax abatement and the 71,431 to request that. Operations and maintenance, there was still some carryover money through, uh, through CARES and ESSER funding, ESSER 1. 
so that is reflected as actual people transportation one fifty two or fifty requests the actual cost that we expect to be we have i think one more bill to pay for our june transportation costs that they have um, ten thousand allocated there central support reflects we had purchased a lot of new technology this year so we bought new teacher laptops um, and that comes under federal money through ecs but it's expensed here and then in addition Athletics, that's the actual um, to cover the uh, all of our coaches and director salaries. So overall, we did better than expected. Um, the ending of the year was putting $55,701 into fund balance to end the year at $542,521. Thank you. Tyler, you mentioned about the um, transportation. So if that is to say that it came out less or it came out more, we would amend that at the next meeting. Uh, you don't have to be make an amendment, but we will have, basically the variance will be just depending on when we get the audit, okay. we'll have a slight variance. So. Okay. We have a recommendation to adopt the 2022-2023 original budgets as presented. We have a motion. I'll make that motion. So we stand for the motion. We have support. I'll support. I'll support. We have a recommendation to approve the 2022 uh, tax rate request to the Point L forty two four thousand twenty nine as presented. I'd like to make one note. Um, I noticed here that this is listed as millage requested to be levied July one. It's typically been a, a winter levy. I mean, excuse me, a summer levy. Um, that will continue as usual however um, looking forward depending on how the fund balance goes if, if folks I would want to look at that just something to keep in mind going forward um, the fund balance that we have now we'll be able to carry us through we'll see how it plays out but I just want to keep that in mind there are some um, PFM our um, financial advisors have mentioned that if possible in your fund balance can carry you you might want to split that levy Just something to consider. Something that you haven't done uh, doesn't need to be done this time. I think we should continue bu business as usual, but just something to keep kind of in the back of your mind as we go forward in, in coming years. What would you be adding? So basically, if we were to do that, we would kind of lower that burden versus having taxpayers pay that all at one time in summer. We would split that amount over the summer and winter levy. Unfortunately, it, it does impact because school districts don't receive state aid funding in September. Right now, we're cash. You know, we have enough cash to carry us through those periods. But in you know, say subsequent years, if funding comes down or state funding goes down, um, a lot of districts <coughs> depend on getting that tax levy. You know, in July, August, getting those checks coming in, coming in through that first line of operation over the PT state aid. So there is there is liability. 
something to consider down the road. Like, you know, we're not a country in which we can do it now, but it is one we can learn from. It. So when will you do that? And what time do you want to do that? Is that the year? It would be during the following year. Yeah, after the following year. you were to operate, say, at a 30 to 40 percent fund balance, we're not quite at that point, you know, then we might be able to do this as cash flow spring, but um, just a, a consideration to ask. So. Other than that, I think, you know, as presented, still be a, a July early position. Do we have a motion to uh, approve the Make that motion. Do you have support? Support. Any further discussion? Thank you, uh, Councilor Hibbs. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Now to number three. We have a recommendation to discuss. Right, so we just wanted to talk a little bit more <coughs> about the options that we have here. Um, with, with that 18%, which is the max, and it's true that school districts all over the state are used to that 18% for the non-homestead tax. Um, but just, uh, Tyler and I discussed this a little bit with Christopher Imolino, our school lawyer who works with us on um, financial things, and um, came up with a suggestion suggestion that we may want to pursue, we wanted to shorten the board, so maybe you spell it out for everybody, Tyler? Sure. So, uh, one option that Christopher had mentioned, Christine and I, when we had talked to him, um, I think he made an agreement, was to, basically, we, we will need to do something to maintain our 18, uh, 18 mills operating levy. Um, currently, this year, we are fine. We're, we're, we have a total levy available of 18.58. However, in subsequent years, if we see as inflation continues to rise and property values change, uh, change hands, um, the millage, if, if the top property taxes exceed uh, the inflation rate, then we are we're hit with uh, the heavy amendment, which basically lets us know that, hey, you, know, you can only collect so much in taxes. It's uh, basically an adjustment to Sure that you're not collecting more taxes than um, than the inflation rate. So I have a fact sheet if you wanted to review it here, just for your information down the road. So I'd rather come and write it down. Um, so as Christina and I talked through through this with Christopher, some of the options that we have, uh, if we go to an election for the November election. We are able to go for um, basically we can go for a renewal of our current operating levy that we have. So we could go back to the voters and request the 18.58 be renewed for a number of years. Um, in that same ballot language or as a separate question, if we haven't received that yet, we should. Um, Christine and I hope that we can go for uh, a renewal and an increase of, of two mills. Uh, it, just a reminder, we can only, per Michigan law, we can only levy 18 mils total. However, um, I just want to share Stanton Township's in a position where they did not have a, they had the hedge, as they like to say, kind of we have over here in the second line item on the L4029. And they are unable, because of their, um, because of their millage reduction fraction due to Headley, they're unable to levy the full 18 mils this, this upcoming year. So they're looking to lose about 50, roughly 50,000 in revenue, state aid revenue. So if the state expects that you collect the full 18 mils against all property or all non-principal uh, residents, and if you don't do that, then you don't receive the state aid foundation. So instead of the 9,000 per pupil, you would get a thousand or something, and that has this immediate one and substantial impact. Obviously, no school wants to be in that boat. Correct. So, option one um, is to go to the voters in the 
file and ask for a renewal for an increase, which would give you a uh, total millage of 20.5809. Um, that gives you a slight hedge against future uh, future heavy, heavy rollback. However, uh, one option that uh, was presented over at Stanton was to go to voters for a new, basically a new increase of 18 mil. So they would have a rolling alternating years levy of 18, basically a total of 36 mils. So they renew 18 one year, 18 four years later, and then it would kind of cycle every eight, eight years. So what that does, just because the 18 mils is familiar with most taxpayers, um, a school district cannot levy more than 18 mils for operating. It just allows, uh, it allows the district to be protected in the case you know, where, where the uh, heavily Consideration. It's not something that Christopher has presented to us. Another lawyer has presented it to Stanton, but I wanted to share it here. Uh, put it in your ear. If you folks do decide to do something, you need to make a decision uh, at the next meeting. I need to get it out there. But so that you know, we'll put this out for the record. So whatever we do, Christina and I believe we should do something because um, the eighteen point five eight will carry us through one year. However, if we see the same millage rate reduction for action of 29.666, we'll be at like 17.94, which falls below the 18 mils. Uh, so we'll lose a little bit of funding if, if nothing is done. Um, but you'll still need to put this out for election in at least at the latest May of next year. Uh, otherwise, our 18 mil, this levy will expire. We need to do something, it's just a matter of, of what, and, and we can provide more information at this time. We don't have a lot other than to you know, at least bring it to the board's attention and give you a couple of options. So as a board, if you want to discuss it, maybe we can, some of the pros and cons, you know, things that we have to look at. The bottom line is we don't want to end up in the situation that Staten is in right. and actually lose money for people because we obviously rely on that as every state does. You, you can't have a school not getting that same amount because schools will be paying salaries and everybody um, on the same expenses that they're able to live with that. So there are a couple of options. The Christopher I. Marino <laughs> true lawyer option of, of renewing the 18 and then um, going for an increase of a smaller amount of you know, around 2% or then this new proposal by this other lawyer of yeah. alternating years, which might be good. but. To the, to the non-homestead taxpayer, there's no, there's no difference unless the school district is in that unfortunate situation that Stanton is in. They're, everyone's just used to that 18, I mean, it's just been 18 forever, you know, and everyone's just used to that. So there is no change year by year. Since that. 94, at least, yeah. Yeah, okay. So, so we, um, like Tyler said, we haven't received the proposed ballot language from Christopher and Marino yet, so we you know, have anything to present to you that it might look like. Um, but meanwhile, um, since Tyler has found this out from Stanton's situation, I think we would want to explore what that would look like as well, and then share that with you before the next meeting, because in July is when we would call that election, and then that would happen in November. Yeah, uh, some of the concerns that Christopher had, of course, or unlikely or, or has been unlikely there's only been a couple of cases around the state where um, an 18 the operating the school operating millage has been you know there's, there's a handful of times that our the lawyers have come up with where it didn't pass so so I think we have uh, you know excellent community I think the word can be spread let them know that, that this is just a continuation of what we currently have we're not looking to increase the taxes that we levy it's just a continuing operation just a, a point to consider, you know, if we, if we spread the word, obviously more can be done at the next meeting, but it should be just a discussion. So. Well, thanks for the information there as well. Uh, looks like we're, we're over a little bit 